like every company or every good digital company let me switch over to where you can see me clearly the way it works like i see people who come in and say oh i'm a software programmer not only you they create your software not only you they design your software not only you they write content for your software it doesn't work that way i learned it the hard way the way it works is if you have a digital agency like me now i've grown into an agency we we'll have a UI UX designer. His own job is to create all the interactions. Like UI means user interface. UX means user interaction or user experience, whichever that interchangeably. Now, these people's job is to create that user interface that people would see. Whether it's a software for mobile phone, whether it's a website, you know, whether it's um, a normal software, anything that will involve where people can be interacting with the software. You know, it's created by UI, UX. So they're the ones who create the Instagram, you see. Like, not like the Instagram, those design of the Instagram, you see. A UI, UX will create where this button will be. They're just graphics. They don't really do coding. Nothing concerns them with coding. Their own job now. Okay, this is Instagram now. We want um, it to be like this. DMs will be, yeah. Um, to add picture, you put a plus, yeah. Then that is the user design, right? They will create the design of what Instagram will be. They will not create things like the experience of what Instagram will be. If you click on the love button, let the love do boom, let it pop up. If you click on um, block, let it ask you, are you sure you want to block this person? If you click on bio, let it show what this person's bio is. They will be the one to design. Okay, let us have a section for pictures. Let us have a section for graphics. So UI UX, the people who design what an app would be like. The design of an app. You will be software programmer, you know, concern you. Now, when you just they start new, now you need to go tell you, say, make you design them, make you do them. Mm -mm. When you don't the advance for software programming, that job now for UI UX. Then UI UX, not be the same thing with graphics. So graphics is like in my company right now, I have to make it. He does UI UX. He's the head of UI UX. Graphics now is Charles Graphics. Anything that involves banner, maybe want to create a banner, uh, want to create a flyer, maybe thumbnail. Like if you look at some of my YouTube videos, you see very beautiful thumbnail. My graphic designer is the one who does that. Um, it is Ramadan. We need to create a graphic scene. Oh, happy Ramadan. He does it. Or let's leave that on now for social media engagement. Let's talk about apps. Now, the UI UX will be the one to design everything, right? But once in a while, we'll need the graphic designer. He will come in to do things like, okay, you know what, graphic designer, we want you to create something like a big giant button to say page not found. He will not be the one to create that big X and write page not found or something very creative. The UI UX does it. We now have people who will call icon that is inside the UI UX. We have people who do nothing more about icon. If you check Google now, Google has unique icons. If it's anywhere where you see Google icon, you go nothing like Google icon. They get they get their own pattern of creating icon. The same thing with Facebook, the same thing with Twitter. So all those icons are unique, right? But you will be upcoming software programmer now. You go 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 they find random icon. They use stock images. Uh, you see they come up. But you get where you go become company and agency. If a company employs you for something, they don't want you using that like the you know most of these images, some of them are copyrighted. You know, you will just go there and steal them and edit them and remove the watermark. No. When you start becoming an agency, you notice that every single thing should be unique they should have a branding you don't pick things randomly to create a website so a ui ux would be the one to design a graphics the graphics department to come up with logo and icons and they still they, they're still the ones who do most of the thumbnails right they work interchangeably ui ux with the graphics department In my own company i have to make it for graphics and i have child i have to make it for ui ux and i have charles for graphics now these are the, like the two people now they're the ones doing graphics so me now as a software programmer now that is where i come in i will now have to pick a struggle either they pick struggle for front end or they pick struggle for back end choose your battle it can't be the two of them but if you don't hustle the way i don't hustle see shaggy you go learn both front and back which i did learn both front and back i'm good in both of them anyway 
But what I love most is the back end. I don't reach one extent so I can't understand the the front end doesn't have any security breach. It doesn't have so many things you put into factor. The back end and their way problem the bank can outsource anybody to create their front end. But you see that back end. The amount of oats and I swear I will never disclose plenty die because that is where the main company is. So that is where I'm giving my whole focus on. So once in a while, I employ software programmers to come and help me create the front end. If my UI, UX, and my graphics, if they come up with what the design of a website or an app is going to be like, after they don't finish them, me, I'll come go back. I will now look at all the futures. Maybe we created a future of messages. We created a future of like, of ad content. Bam. Me, the back end, and I'll come the design to what they call APIs. By APIs, it simply means I would create things that once you call, it will be able to do certain things. You don't just carry any Tom, Dick, and Harry. Tell them to go the access your website database, your company structure. Oh, boy, they go hack you. So if you put back doors, tomorrow your website don't go down. Or tomorrow somebody is telling you to pay billions of naira and so on. So the best way to do that is to have selective people. In my company, the only person I've been able to trust is somebody I call Emmanuel and chance on these are the only two people i can ask to a great extent say okay have access to my back end because you know we've been able to build the reputation it's not something you can give to anybody so emmanuel is the head of software so basically me and myself and i just agawa the once in a while i call him we just we talk about what is it going to be like now the back end it's something that one person sometimes cannot do alone it's things you discuss like for instance I'm working on a project which I would share with you from the beginning of the project down to the fruition. The aim is for you to learn exactly how we launch products. This product is something that will change the whole real estate business in Nigeria. It's something I created a few years ago, but that time I created. Don't laugh me, yo. I still be that program I will be the year a few minutes ago. Now let me be the UI, UX. Now let me be the graphics. Now let me be the front end. Now let me be back end. Now let me be project manager. Now let me be everything. And the way company floated, it did well. But I mean, obviously, you don't create a startup yourself alone. If there's anything I can go back to change, I would go back to work with people and read books. I think whenever you see me doing videos, you see books everywhere. They're not for fancy. I'm a nerd. And while reading, I got to figure out that you need people to be able to create a product and an empire. It's something I wish they told me, but they didn't tell me. I did it. I flopped. So now I don't tell you. It's up to you to go do and where. <laughs> so what I'm teaching you today now is what Tomike, my UI UX, has designed. So what I'm trying to do right now is to look at the concept of what he has done and draft out what the back end is going to be like. So I've worked with lots of Nigeria front-end programmers, and I can tell you... Uh, always you it's not easy you give a nigeria programmer to design something on the front end it's either there is no light there is no data he's busy something something to tell you is one week it's two weeks or it even take four months to achieve something that sometimes and everything make it be like something they efficient i'm a software programmer i will not be sano sabi do i do all of them i will come go first sit up con the coder myself and it was what really slowed down my progress in lots of things. So what I do now is I use Indians, these Indian guys with the freelancer, um, Upwork, Fiverr. I engage them. In fact, if you watch my video, the other day I was complaining about how I couldn't pay them. I had to like take them to crypto. It wasn't making sense. If I engage somebody on Fiverr, I will not tell you I want to pay you through USDT because I couldn't pay with Fiverr. Fiverr requires PayPal. So it was because of the pressure, I was able to find a way to get my PayPal account verified, which is a plus win for me. So now I can easily go to Fiverr and employ front-end developers. So when we see what Tomike has done, which is the UI UX, we we'll first of all structure what the back end is going to be like. I will tell you how it's going to be, the system architecture, what software we're we using to do it, what programming language, what framework. Are we going to be using um python i'm going to be using node.js i'm going to be using php i'm going to be using goland what back end structure i'm going to be using what database i'm going to be using firebase i'm going to be using uh mongo i'm going to be using um uh, mysql what 
data is? How are they going to be structured? What would the APIs be like? Now, it is not something you do immediately. It's something we'll, we'll first plan. In fact, creating a software at the back end requires the first one, functionality. How would these things function? Second one, security. For every single function, there are sometimes vulnerability. So you have to go back to check if this function or if these things you're using has vulnerability. I think one of the one of the worst vulnerability I encountered was when I created a, a medium where people can upload images. That means you can upload like your profile picture or something. I wasn't aware there was a vulnerability on one PH uploader that I used. That vulnerability made it possible for you to upload a backdoor script. So for my website now, if you're familiar with Kali, Kali, Kali or Parrot OS, it's what we call ESIF. It is what you use to put virus inside a picture. So you can take a picture of me in a charm. After snapping me, you put it on Parrot OS. You put a backdoor script inside there. And once you upload that picture to my website, you will get access to my website. If you enter, delete my whole database. If you hack me, carry my whole data. Or more, I don't know. And when one idiot do me the thing, tell me to my and 2K doors. Lock what I get. I get my GitHub. The amount of authentication, they crazy. And I told him, would you show me how you did it? He said, hey, God, you know, as they talk now, it's a co-hackers. They don't see one vulnerability. They want photo for one, they blow their trumpets. They tell you their certification and all that. I had to go through log of almost two days plus. Because guy was telling me, he, I should pay him like 10K. You know, he practically deleted my site. I should pay him like 10K. So what I figured out was, with my whole experience in hacking, if I pay him that, sorry, that 2K for him to restore my file, the vulnerability is there. I said I should pay him 10K. The problem with hackers is they don't really tell you exactly what vulnerability they have. So they can come back and exploit you again. You'll be like blackmailer. Who catch you today? Get your sex tape. Go come back tomorrow. There you tell God pay again. And so what I decided to do was to go back again and start thinking of, okay, how would this guy have access? I was practically reading all my codes again. Now, there I can't see that my PHP uploader. I don't know waiting just inspired me. I feel it was local because that time I really felt that I checked my whole code, everything this smooth. God, be, ah, me be hacker now. I get lots of certificates now. Like I'm a certified hacker in, in numerous. I have lots of, I don't want to start going into that now. So I read all my code, know where problem they come from. And one of the principles of backend is after functionality, check security. So I started going through the whole security. I think I can't go CC. The PHP image manager, what they use? They don't bring new version. Oh. The old version gave vulnerability. Oh. ESIF, the Ficaria inject something for personal website. I all go back for my GitHub, clone onto to my PC, upgrade the PHP mailer, put them back. And I'm really very lucky that the site, he wasn't able to really get any realistic authorization because I put my website like, in things like Docker. I have my um, DNS one section, which has a whole different password, a whole different two-factor authentication. Then I have a hosting server differently, right? And each of my sites have been hosted differently on their own VPS. So if you hack one of my sites, now only that one you go free hack, you know, if you enter the other ones. And then I, I went to that particular one, reformatted the host system, made sure I changed every single thing. Then clone back it on my website, put it back. And then he told me, Oh, because the first thing he asked me was, do you have a backup? And I said, no. I mean, when it comes to ethical hacking, you don't really, you act like you're the most vulnerable. That is the principle of hacking. It's called social engineering. When a hacker meets you, you don't act like you're one step ahead. They'll start thinking of how to mold you more. Act like you're on their mercy. That way you get them. And so when he came back again. Hey, hey, I've got you. I, said, I told him, if you hack me again, mate, I pay you $10,000. And then he tried it today as not. So... That simply means the back end has a whole lot of work to do, and it's something you need to really put your eyes on. So I cannot be doing back end and still want to be doing front end because back end is very delicate, right? So Fiverr, I get to employ this um, front end. Uh, one of the questions asked me: Can the front end developers in any way hack you? Um, yeah. If you give, if you let them create it and you implement it without proofreading it. In the sense that if I finish creating my backend, I'll only give you APIs and I'll relate what those APIs can do. But even after creating your own 
front end i would have to go back to your because i'm like i said i do both front end and back end i'm familiar with the boots but i just don't have strength to start coding my front end i mean when you have money you should start employing people to make work easy for you so that is the concept of the whole thing so when you give me i can take one hour to read a code that took one week to write right the thing about coding is it takes creativity imagination to it takes you time to draw like you see this thing now if i want to draw a picture it will take me hours to draw that picture but it only takes me five seconds to read it right if i want to act a movie it could take me one month to shoot that movie it will only take me 30 minutes to watch the movie that is how it is in software programming so it could take the software programmer hours days to do it but when they're done with it i will just look at the code and within a few minutes i already know if there's a vulnerability they're trying to inject on my side and i'll tell you come what is this i won't even tell you most times uh they just they fix them but i've rarely seen anyway because um i've rarely seen but i know it's possible if anyone wants to do it they can do it so i'm gonna i think you guys learned something today on on software program i really oh my god this my clothes is a bit rumpled though no mind me just came out picked up a normal cloth at home and i wore I didn't, I wasn't hoping on being professional today or putting on a suit or something. So I really talk about my profession. Coming online is usually talking about funny things and movements. But yeah, so if you learned anything on software programming today, use the comment section. So let's head back into showing you what Stomika did. Let us map out our back end and proceed from there. So let's head back to my computer. And um, uh -huh. back to waiting will be the talk before self. The issue we will get now for this project, we say I can't find where to make this this thing. This is my Figma. There are types of Figma. I use Figma business. Okay, let me go to my team. This is my team on Figma. I don't know. I think it is start showing you my staff's email and all that. So let me quickly leave here before. Ah, let me switch out to. Let me switch out to. Don't they show my my staff sensitive details? Okay, let me stop this video. I want to go get a capture card. This one is not capturing my Windows computer properly. So let me get a proper capture card and I'll be back. So till next time, this is an okay. Um, please hit the like and subscribe or how you guys do it to give me engagement.